Uh, to recap, I intend to step down as president of the UNC system effective March 1, 2019. All leaders are for a time. When I was hired in October of 2015, the board made their expectations clear, and over the past three years, my team and I, in partnership with the Board of Governors, our boards of trustees, our chancellors, have met those expectations. I'm proud of the people around me. I'm proud of the faculty, the staff, and the students that make up the UNC system. I'm proud of our chancellors, and I'm proud of the team here at the system office. I'm proud of the work we have done and all that we have accomplished. Together, we have defied national trends on affordability and accountability. Together, we developed a muscular and measurable strategic plan with institution-specific performance agreements and publicly available dashboards that has created accountability and transparency and laid the foundation for years to come. Together, we put a lid on tuition, implementing NC Promise, implementing fixed tuition for students who are continuously enrolled, and passing two years of no tuition hikes for resident students. Together, we strengthened each of our institutions, raising enrollments, raising graduation rates, increasing completions for underserved groups, including low-income and rural students. We are graduating more students in critical workforce areas and increasing external research funding. Our state's confidence in this world-class system is clear. The General Assembly invested in us with the strongest budget in a decade, and taxpayers have invested in us through the Connect NC bond, the first buildings of which have now opened for students. All of this has happened over the past three years in the midst of a changing landscape buffeted by the urgent issues of the day. As a system, we have adapted and evolved to meet the times. We've elevated the system platform and rebranded as the unified statewide system that we are. And we've used our platform to better tell the story of our university. We brought together thought leaders from across the state to connect the education continuum like never before. Initiatives like the My Future NC Commission, our teacher preparation efforts, and the financial aid study group are examples of the statewide coalition we have created. I came into the position intent on creating a culture of higher expectations and that shift is underway. But times change and those changes demand new leaders and new approaches. I will leave proud of the contributions made during my tenure and forever honored to have served. I've been blessed with the opportunity to travel this state and meet its best and brightest. This university is the state's most important asset, its mightiest engine. The students, the faculty, the staff, and the leaders of the UNC system are among the most dedicated, talented, and inspiring individuals I have ever known, and they are the lifeblood of what we do. Great leaders have come before, and great leaders will follow. Our public institutions are more important today than ever before, and when we are given the opportunity to steward them, to make them a little stronger than they were, we must take that responsibility solemnly and treat it with the gravity that it demands. I'm proud to have carried the torch during a period of reform and progress, a period when we focused on extending economic mobility for every North Carolinian, on higher expectations and accountability for our students and taxpayers, and on serving and meeting the public good. Tomorrow's leaders are in our universities right now. They're our graduates, and I hope they're watching and believing that leaders can put aside differences, work together for common goals, and put the needs of the institution first. As I make this decision, my top priority and the top priority of this board is to maintain and uphold the people, the mission, and the reputation of the UNC system and to work to ensure a smooth transition. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Margaret. Well said. I'll make a few talking points, but before questions, we're grateful and appreciative of Margaret's service, her commitment, and certainly her professionalism leading this system. Under Margaret's strong and capable leadership, we've worked together to achieve a lot of great things. We're keeping things affordable. We're making our institutions accountable. 
and we're getting the fact, data, and detail, we need to be world class. Uh, Margaret has led this system through thick and thin. She has brought on to make much needed reforms and set us on a solid path. For a long-term success, she has done just that. We are better off because of it, and we thank her for it. Mark and the board have reached a mutual agreement that is now the right time for a new leader for our next chapter because of the strong platform we have established. Given Margaret's work and accomplishments, we've agreed to separation terms that reflect her contributions. Today, our top priority is a healthy transition from president to interim, a positive departure for the president, and continued progress in the meantime on the very big initiatives and key work that we have achieved together. Okay, open the floor. Blake, I was with WCHL on March 1st last year for your two-year anniversary. You said that you loved your job two weeks ago. To Joe's question, you said you absolutely were going to stay. So what changed? Why not? You know, I, I think we all uh, reflect, you know, on, on our professional and personal lives and, uh, you know, the, the discernment of all of that. And uh, I've just concluded that, you know, my three-year anniversary in March was really the right time for me. I, I, I made, uh, given it my all, made a lot of contributions together with this board and the people that work in this university and in this system office, and uh, it's the right time for me. Mr. Spellings, you're, you're not saying I want to spend more time with uh, my family and for that, you know, showing the authentic person that people have described you as. Um, but why was it necessary to inject after two and a half years, halfway through your expected term? Like I said, I mean, these are, these are personal decisions. Uh, you know, these are, are tough jobs, uh, demanding jobs. Uh, three years uh, it is, a, is a good run. I'm proud of the accomplishments that have, that have occurred in that period of time. I'm proud of the work we've done together. And it's just the right time for me. Chris, Chair, uh, Mr. Smith, I'm going forward. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were upset when President Trump came on board mm -hmm. and if there wasn't much public input. Mm -hmm. How are you guys going to do it differently this time and looking forward? Yeah, um, you know, right now our focus has been obviously on uh, on working uh, to get to a great, healthy place and ensuring that we did so uh, with nothing but grace and dignity and respect for the phenomenal job that Margaret Spellings has done, and uh, and the fact that we've been so fortunate to have her for the time frame we've had her. We'll move uh, next to uh, the interim process, and then I can tell you that uh, we're we're going to not be in a rush. Uh, our focus will be to get it right. And so we'll move to an interim that we feel like uh, can help us uh, be, uh, uh, you know, not in that rush and, uh, and then work to put a structure and a process together that has uh, key and critical constituents, stakeholder buy-in, and move forward in a methodical and organized manner. And, uh, and we'll be seeking, obviously, input in that process. We've been, obviously, working on a lot of areas, uh, you know, in the search process, but I think you'll see a lot of detail and a tremendous amount of uh, uh, input that we allow, you know, across all the constituents and stakeholders in the state. Yeah. Um, you say between the two of you it was a mutual decision uh, to move in this direction. Uh, who started that conversation? I did. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I went to Harry about, I don't know, a few weeks ago, yeah. and uh, we started to have this conversation. And, uh, you know, it, this is my instigation, and I so appreciate and respect the support that the board is showing for me and this timing. Uh, and I, I hope I've left a uh, place better than I found it and have made a, a worthy contribution. And I'm always grateful for the opportunity to have done that. Let me tell you, you know, having uh, been able to sit beside Margaret for uh, uh, quite a while now and, uh, and have enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, you know, it's a big job. I, I'm telling you, for those that don't know it, it's a big job. And so late at night, early in the morning, uh, issues coming left and right, it's just a big job. I mean, that's one thing that I have uh, garnished the respect for is the enormity and magnitude of the job. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, higher education is under some pressure anyway. And, you know, from the trend perspective, I, I mean, I, I think, you, you, you know, we're, I don't think Margaret's far off the trend. And, you know, and so, um, you know, it, I, I'm telling you, this, it, 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 it's a lot. And I, I got to tell you, um, you know, I, I, I can't say enough great things about how she shouldered it. And so, you, you know, um, and she's done it with grace and dignity. And, uh, you, you know, the, the great thing about Margaret is she's worked at the upper echelons of power and politics. And so I think... Uh, uh, she's uh, um, 
you know, been a tremendous asset to the state, and uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, uh, I think the Board of Governors feels that way too. Um, and uh, and uh, we we'll, we focus now is uh, on the enterprise, making sure that we're doing everything we can uh, to uh, ensure the UNC system is uh, in a good place, an appropriate place, and also ensure that we don't do anything but treat uh, someone who's been phenomenal to this state with nothing but grace, dignity, and respect. And uh, you're going to see that, and uh, she deserves that. And uh, you know, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt from somebody who has taken an active role of learning and understanding the state is by far better off because of our time with Margaret's balance. Next question. Uh, um, so did, um, did this, did this strike on the board play a role in your decision to, to step down? And, and what are you going to do next? Well, I like to think that I'm young enough to have uh, a, a few more good licks in me, so I, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I appreciate the, the boards uh, uh, giving me some breathing room to explore that. I hope it will be in continued public service. I expect it will be back in, in Texas. Um, with respect to, you know, the dynamics on the board, look, you know, uh, I've been involved in public policy for a long time. and. You know, uh, governance is always being calibrated and recalibrated over and over, and that's part of the fun of the job. It's part of the job. It's part of the the character of the enterprise. And um, I've done it for three years, and the time is right for me to really step back and reflect on, you know, how many more licks can I hit? How many more rodeos do I have? What's in my future? And and move on. And I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity. I appreciate the respect. I've been and am being shown, and uh, I can't wait to get to work on all the things that need to get done between now and the time I walk out the door for, for good. We've got time for one more, Sarah. Hey, when, you, when you came into the, this role, I mean, I know that you, you wanted to focus on accountability, affordability, and, and you have had to spend a chunk of your tenure here responding to cultural controversies, I would say, um, um, in the bathroom bill, free speech issues. I mean, did the political and cultural climate in the state um, and the fact that you couldn't often <coughs> focus on affordability and accountability, did that influence your decision to step down? Well, I, I, uh, I think we have continued to focus on affordability and accountability throughout, uh, major and the majors, as I like to say. And, you know, the nature of the enterprise is that all of these things, you know, are on center stage in American higher education, whether they're issues of of race or equity or class or speech or you know on and on and on and again that's part of the that's part of the uh, of the job and part of the the fun of the job and the interesting part of the job because it is the central place where we litigate those issues in our society and um, no I'm not surprised by it and I think we've done a lot of good uh, notwithstanding the hurricanes of all kinds. Mm -hmm.